What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Forgotten Jesus Podcast. My name's Andrew. With us today is Pastor Robbie Gowdy and his wonderful wife, the better half of the two, Candy. Uh, ah. Today, Pastor, true, true. speaking of genealogy, we are talking about the genealogy of Jesus. Right. We're going to get into how do we know that Jesus is the Messiah? Not just a Messiah-type figure, but mm. the Messiah that had been prophesied about and people were waiting on. Yeah, we spent a little bit of time last week about... Uh, son of Abraham, son of David. We talked about that. Now we're going to get into, he has to fulfill two requirements, one from the Southern kingdom okay. and one from the Northern kingdom. Okay. What does that mean? Southern, Northern okay. kingdom. This is Candy's jam right here, if you okay. will. So Go. Candy, tell us a well, little short history lesson oh about gosh. the divide of the two and the 10. Emphasis seemed we, to be on short. I don't know if I can sure. do an accurate Okay. Without having a refresh, but basically the kingdom, the kingdom of David is divided. Solid, <laughs> is divided. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Candy, ahead. tell us about this. By the way, so well, what I was about to say her is... up like a running start. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, I, I do find the divided kingdom and all that is fascinating in the Old yeah. Testament. And okay. if you don't understand it, you need to read about it. Okay. But yes, the kingdom divided. And what do you want me to say about that? That's it. That's it. We got we got it done right there. The kingdom divide. Now, that there was a there was an infighting and the kingdoms sure. divide. Okay, the northern, northern and southern. southern kingdom. Yeah, that all makes sense. Okay, the north. <laughs> The southern kingdom is Judah. The northern kingdom is Samaria and then the parts of Israel to, to the north, okay? They're divided. Now, both of them came out and said the Messiah needs to have this trait, if you will, to sit on the throne. Okay. Okay? The southern kingdom of Judah says he needs to be of the descendant of a person and he needs to sit on his throne through his genealogy. Do you know who it is? Uh, I'm going to go David. 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 And what they said is anyone who tries, this was the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah said, anyone who tries to claim the throne of David, who's not of the lineage of David, God himself will throw them off the throne. God will yeah. remove them, if you will. Why is that important? Uh, so you don't have fake messiahs on the throne? Yes, well, because God has a plan. That's and when you put your plan above God's plan, yeah. God's going to step in. Yeah. Okay, so that was the southern requirement. The northern requirement had a different rule, if you will. They said that this person had to be affirmed, if you will. They had to be appointed, if you will. They had to be set apart by a person. So the southern kingdom said they had to be of the lineage of David. Mm -hmm. The northern kingdom said this person has to be confirmed. This person has to be identified mm -hmm. by one person, in a sense. Who was it? I don't know. Father Abraham? Father God. Ooh. Ooh. God himself. Mm. God himself has to put, if you will, his seal of approval prophetically on this person. So what did that look like to okay. living, actually uh, living in that day? Okay, so I'm going to give you three of them. Okay. You know, the Bible says a person is confirmed by the witness of two or three. Right. Okay. I'm gonna give you three of them, and then I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you an invert. I'm gonna give you a uh, what you call inception of three within the three. Okay. Awesome. Okay. This so I'm gonna give you three. Just like Candy's explanation. I'm gonna give you three of and three inside of three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Matthew and Luke are gonna show that Jesus is affirmed collectively in three ways. Okay. But you put the two gospels together, you have three affirmations. The first affirmation that this is not a normal child comes from who to Mary. Do you remember? Uh, an angel. An angel, Gabriel. And by the way, when Gabriel shows up on the scene, Gabriel the angel is always delivering what? Mail. <laughs> yes, a certain kind of uh, yeah, yeah. Gmail. Yeah, the Gmail. 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 Yeah, the Gmail account. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Can we Gmail edit account. that out? No, no, we had a Gmail account. <laughs> and he basically sends God mail. Right. When Abraham comes on the scene, it's always good news. Yeah. Okay. You see, I mean, Gabriel, Gabriel. Gabriel. When Gabriel comes on the scene, it's yeah. good news from God. Mm -hmm. He's delivering good news. Right. Or he's delivering news, basically. Okay. That's the first affirmation. The second affirmation is from a person who is a prophet. And he sees him coming by the water that day, and he says, behold. Mm, John. John the Baptist. Right. Okay. And the third affirmation comes even more than that by who? Kind of trumps, you know. Mic drop of them all. God himself at the baptism. Oh, when he descended on him like a dove? Yeah, well, that was the Holy Spirit. But yes, God himself through the, sp Same the Spirit, yeah. But God spoke from heaven. 
Yeah. What do you say? And this well, is my beloved son. Yes. This Ooh, is my on. good job. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well, well pleased. pleased. Right. What's interesting about that? What, what are you going to say? I have a question. Okay. Is it off topic? Because I want to keep on. I want to finish this topic. No, it's okay, not. Okay. Okay. I was going to say because if we got off topic, I'm going to forget. Okay. Well. Maybe I should just not say it. No, no, say, no, say, say it, say it, say it. Remind me about the baptism. Uh, so you the do. baptism. Okay, okay, okay. Right. okay go no, for no, the question. Go for I the was question. just going to ask when when Joseph and Mary brought him to the temple. Th- what, th- what? Remember when they when he they brought them to the temple and like the there was a when he was the, like thirteen. Uh, no, yeah, no, no, twelve. When he was a baby, right? Well, and the eight, prophet eight, eight says, yeah, yeah, Simeon and Anna. Yeah, um, that doesn't have any. Like that's not anything. Like what you're talking about here about how God. Like an announcement. Well, or- yeah, but that's just a person. See, they said they this person had to be prophetically affirmed by God himself. Okay. And the only reco- the only way that could happen is through a prophet or the voice of God. Well, prophetess. Or an angel. Wasn't she? A- anyway, go ahead. Well, I guess she was, yeah. Te- I didn't know. Te- technically, yeah. It could be a fourth one. Yes, there could be a fourth one. But, Ooh, look at you. Yeah, it could be a fourth one, but... <laughs> I had to talk to that, you a that was all you, Candy. That was all. Oh, yeah, she's got okay, me thinking. Okay, so now. the baptism. Okay, so yeah, but but God, forget the other ones. God Himself is going to step on the scene. Jesus right. is thirty years old. He's about to begin His public ministry, and at the baptism, we notice that there are three different people present at one time. And by the way, this is this is my argument for people who are uh, who believe in something called modalism. You ever heard of this? I have modalism. Not. I've Never not heard of this. Okay, so modalism is this idea where God, the Trinity, God the Father, God the mm-hmm. Son, God the Holy Spirit, he's not three persons as one. It's not three distinct persons as one. It's actually three different forms of Jesus. Did you know, have you heard this form, modalism? I have not heard this. I'm not going to mention the names of people who believe this just for the sake of the podcast, but you can go look them up online. Just yeah. type in modalism preachers. You find some are surprising. But it's this idea that the Trinity, the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, not not one person, one, one in three persons. It's one person in three expressions. And they would say that one person is Jesus. Right. Hmm. Jesus is God in the Old Testament. Jesus is God in the New Testament. Jesus is God in the, in the book of Acts. Now, the, the, the theology breaks down really quick yeah. when you get to the baptism. Because of the bapti- that, because that's all you have to do is find one place in the in the Bible yeah. where all three distinct persons are present at the same time. Right. Okay. And all three persons are distinctly present at the same time at the baptism of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because you have the voice of heaven from right. God speaks. So God the Father's there by voice. Jesus, the Son of there, is there in the water. And the Holy Spirit of God distinct from Jesus, separate right. from Jesus as a person, is descending upon him like a dove. Now, right. not a dove. Not a dove. But like, like a, a dove. dove. Word pictures. Yes, like a dove upon Jesus. And basically, you have the Trinity there together. And what's interesting is you have all three of them present at one time, basically saying this, the Spirit and the Father are saying, this is the Son. This right. is the man you've been looking for. So Jesus comes on the scene and fulfills both of those prophetic affirmations. He's right. of the lineage of David. He's prophetically called out by God. He's God's son. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Are you going to say something, Kenny? You, you, yep. you say, yeah. Okay. Now, Matthew's going to take it a step further with a number. We talked about this earlier year, uh, years, <laughs> a long time ago. Like it. It, feels it feels like, like years ago. It feels like years ago. Uh, we talked about this earlier in the, in the number gamatria. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gamatria is this idea that the Jewish people look at numbers, not just as digits or uh, of a numerical value, although it has that, but it has a deeper meaning. Right. You have to remember the Hebrew language does not have 26 letters. Mm. They, uh, in fa- uh, the, the Hebrew language doesn't have 20. I mean, sorry, the Hebrew language does, doesn't have 26, but the Hebrew language doesn't have the words we have. Right. The English language has hundreds of thousands of words. Right. The Hebrew language has 18,000 words, basically. 18,000 words in the Hebrew language compared, compared to, to the English. Like two, two to 300,000 in English. Oh, wow. Did you know the English language used to have 27 letters? Did you know that? I found that out the no. other day. What was yeah, the, the 27th one was like the little and symbol. Actually, I said, I said 18,000. I think it's 8,000. Google it. The and symbol? Yeah. At, like at? That's what TikTok said. 
Google it. See if I'm wrong. Not now. I'm talking TikTok. to people. The, the Where people have, we re have we resorted to TikTok? For well, I, there's a lot of people who watch your clips on TikTok Absolutely. and have I even know. come to the Lord. No. Pastor, no, so. no, I know. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I take your word for it. Okay. So they didn't have 18,000. They had 8,000 words. I'm pretty sure. You can okay. fact check that. But I'm pretty sure it's 8,000 words compared to 100 to 200,000 words. Now, why is this important? It's important because they had to use the words. The words mm. were pregnant with meaning. Okay, but not only did the words have meaning, the numbers had meaning. Okay, and we talked about this before. One is the number one, but it also symbolizes what? God. One God. Mm -hmm. Two is the number, uh, obviously two, but two what? Two tablets. Moses came down with tablets. This is an example. They got more examples. Sure. Three is the number of what? And obviously three, but it's also the Trinity. The Trinity. The Trinity. But right. that's the New Testament. What about for Jesus' day? They didn't look at the Trinity until after. Because Jesus didn't go, right? Correct. So three fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, okay? The three patriarchs. The number four, four corner, corners of the earth. We would say the four mm -hmm. gospels. Five is the five books of Moses. Okay? Four corners of the earth as I drop my phone. I apologize. Yeah. Does that mean it's flat earth? How do you have corners <laughs> or something that's not flat? <laughs> Okay. Again, TikTok is helping TikTok. Andrew grow in his <laughs> the, the education. Yes. Uh, okay. No, but, but here's the point. Okay. So the number seven was important. Okay. There are a lot of sevens you're going to see, but the number seven was important because the numbers actually mean something, mm -hmm. right? The number six meant incompletion, insufficient, okay. unsatisfactory, not enough. The number seven meant what? Complete. Perfect. No. Okay, that's good. I'm glad you said that. We've always said perfect, perfection. Right. Partly completion. Completion, yes. A better way, because some people say wholeness. I mean, some people say perfection, but it's not really right. perfection. It's more wholeness, satisfaction, yeah, fullness, completion. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need that's anything right. else, okay? Did you know that Matthew is the master of Easter eggs with the number seven? Uh, I did not know that. Do now, why is the number seven important for the Jewish mind? Because it's the number of wholeness or completion. They right. love the number seven. Right. God worked on the sixth day and rested on the what? Seven. On the seventh day, okay? Uh, you have a celebration of the Sabbath on the seventh day. You have mm -hmm. the celebration of the Sabbath rest for the land. Festivals on every... There seven are seven years. festivals. Every seven years right. you give back. Yeah. Seven sevens on the 50th year after the seven sevens, you have the year of Jubilee. Okay, let me ask you this. Does that mean we need to read into every single seven we run into in scripture or just some of them are saying? Okay, so let me give a disclaimer. Okay. Let me warn you. Do you you're not looking for every insight under every rock it's and not cranny. not the Da Vinci Code. No, it's not, well, the, no, the Da Vinci Code is, yeah, that's a whole other category. But yes, in, in that vein, the Da Vinci Code was looking at the Hebrew and Greek language and using it like a crossword puzzle to predict predictions like Nostradamus did for the future. No, that's not what it's talking about. W or even Bible, when people say, do you know John 3.16 oh. and the verse Jeremiah 3.16 yeah. have a connection? Did you know that? And God can only, do, and I say, that's great. But did you know there were no verses and chapters until the 16th century? Yeah. But God in his sovereignty could have done that. <laughs> well, he could have done that. Yeah. But the question we got to ask is, or the point we got to make in, in interpreting the Bible is this. Here's the hermeneutical principle. Here's the biblical principle. You can't apply a text today in a different way than it was applied back then. Right. A text can't mean something today, different today yeah. than it meant back then, right? Now, now, application-wise, principalization of a text, yes, that's okay. Yeah. But as far as taking a text and ripping it out and making it apply, so that's the, not what I'm talking about. So Matthew used the number seven. Mm -hmm. The number seven was a big number. And I'm going to show you the, the usage of the number seven, not just in the genealogy, but all through the Bible. Or his gospel, okay? Did you know in the number seven, Matthew is going to divide. We talked about this before. He's going to divide his book into seven divisions. Mm -hmm. mm. He has an intro. He has an outro, too. And then he has the middle of the book centered around the five sermons or discourses of Jesus. We talked about this before. The Sermon on the Mount, chapters mm -hmm. five through seven. The commissioning of the disciples, chapter 10. Uh, the parables of the kingdom, chapter 13, uh, chapter 18, the manual of what happens when he's gone. And then the Olivet discourse. Why would he do that five? Because Moses gave five books. 
Mm-hmm. So you got seven wow. divisions yeah. of Matthew. Okay, let's continue on. The genealogy, which we'll save for next week, is Isn't all about it? seven. Yeah. It's all about seven. It's we should th- be guessing these. Okay, so okay, let's do the third one. What what prayer or what section of the Sermon on the Mount has the number seven embedded within the structure? Okay, let you listen. If you're listening, which part of the Sermon on the Mount mm. has the number seven as the structure of how Jesus teaches them something. Was that the forgiveness? Like seven times seven. seven. Times okay, seven. that's a whole nother one. That's a whole nother one. Peter says, how much, that's not the Mount Sermon Mount, but how, Peter says, how, how, how often should I forgive my brother? Yeah. What does he say? Seven times seven. Seven right? times seven or seven times seven. Means- Always. Oh, yeah, forever, okay. But in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is going to give them a simple formula to pray. Oh, our Father, did you know in our Father there are certain there's a certain amount of petitions to the Father? Mm. Give us this day. Do mm. not lead us. Right. Forgive us. Our, seven of them. Seven of them. Mm. Did you know that seven? Okay. How many loaves of bread does Jesus take in the Decapolis and multiply? For the uh, sustenance. Well, it's of the not people. the bread; it's the baskets they picked up. Correct. Well, no. For, well, first, it's the bread. Did yeah. you know this? And I'm gonna go out on five loaves and two fish. That's well, that's seven. in Galilee. Yeah. On, in the Decapolis, which is the very next chapter, if you will, he, he Jesus does two feedings. If you remember, yeah. right. one feeding is in um, the Galilee area. Right. One feeding is in the Decapolis. Yeah. Right. Okay. In the Decapolis feeding, in, in the Galilee feeding, he has how many fish? Seven. Two. And how many pieces of bread? Five. For a number of what? Seven. 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 When you go to the Decapolis, he just starts right out the gate with what? Seven. Seven loaves of bread. Mm-hmm. I didn't remember that. Yeah, well, it's in your Bible. Isn't there seven pagan nations Well, that's because you're trying to read through your whole Bible in one year instead of slowing <laughs> down. <laughs> Here we go. And just spending that's time with the Jesus. Problem. Now listen. We are checking boxes. <laughs> not nice, Andrew. Nice. I'm, I'm actually, just kidding, Candy. I was just, I was just. Okay, I'm not currently reading it in its You're not currently right reading now. the Bible? She's finally listening. No, no, I'm reading the Bible. Oh. <laughs> I'm not reading just, it in its second. entirety yeah. in a year right now. Yeah, okay. she's slowing down. Yeah. Matthew is OCD with this number seven. I mean, he yeah. just can't get the number seven because he's trying to prove a point for us, okay? So we have uh, seven times seven, forgive. What about the husbands? Of the, oh, yeah, I okay. remember that one. The, the brothers. You have, a bro- you have a husband who dies, mm-hmm. you marry the brother. brother. Yeah. Whose the wife bro- is she in heaven, yeah. Uh, whose wife is she in heaven, Matthew chapter 22, verse 25. Not, not How many numbers of brothers total? Seven. Seven. When Jesus picks up the baskets for the disciples, how many baskets left over in the area of the, of the Galilee? Twelve. Twelve, right? But um, what else? You're, right. you're you, comparing. No, you got me sidetracked. It's seven loaves. Is yeah, what it's I'm your thinking. fault, yeah. Andy. What seven, did I do? Seven, <laughs> seven, <laughs> okay, not, um, okay, here's a final one. There, there could be more. Let me give you another one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking into your eyes. I'm, getting, I'm losing my... No, here's another one. Jesus is going to give woes to the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. Uh, Woe yeah. to you Pharisees right. who Bruce clean the up the outside and, and inwardly are stone cold or whitewashed right. tombs. Right. How Matthew many? How many woes? Yeah, Matthew twenty-three. How many woes does Jesus give? Seven. Seven. The pattern of Israel, the nation, it, the yeah. blueprint is built upon the number seven. God created the world in six days, rested on the seventh day. Everything's about seven. Okay, now watch this. In the genealogy of Matthew, let me give you the big picture and we're done here. The big picture of Matthew is this. The genealogy of Matthew is basically three segments of a genealogy. The first segment is Abraham, which is basically the Abrahamic section, which is about... Um, I think the first two sections are about um, a thousand years. Okay, so you have Abraham, the first section, David, the second section, and then you have about a 400-year section where you move from the exile from the Babylon, Jeconiah, and then you go all the way down to Joseph, the father of Jesus, the, the, uh, or the, uh, the father of Jesus who gave birth to Jesus, who's called the Messiah. Okay, here's the deal. The interesting thing is this, out of those genealogies, you have three sections of seven, or three sections of 14. Mm -hmm. So the first is 14 names. I don't know if you know this. In the genealogy, go count them. The first set from Abraham to David, 14, okay? The second set of names from David all the way down to Jeconiah is how many? 14. 
and from the exile of Babylon, Jeconiah, all the way down to the birth of Jesus, the father Joseph, mm -hmm. 14. Mm -hmm. 14 is a number divisible by what? Uh, seven. Seven. And how many sevens are in three fourteens? Three. Uh, six. Six. Which is not complete. Which is not complete. So when Jesus comes on the scene as the son of Joseph, who is the wow. final mm. father yeah. in a series of three sets of 14 divisible by seven, which is the number six, watch this. Jesus begins as the number one guy to start the seventh generation. Mm. And isn't it interesting that Jesus is the father of all generations right. for anyone who puts their faith in Christ and him. Yeah. Why? Because he is complete. He is enough. And no one needs another father yeah. when Jesus is our father. Wow. Well, pastor, thank you for that. I don't know about you guys listening, but I have forever skipped over the genealogies. Hey, let me get into the meat of this. Yeah. And now I'm seeing, okay, there's like, there's meat there. Good. Like I'm skipping all the the good stuff when I skip over that genealogy. So thank you for that. Well, next week too, we'll talk about the four women in okay. the genealogy and okay. we'll also talk about the Jeconiah problem. Ooh, the Jeconiah problem. All right, well, hey, thank you guys for joining us on this episode. If it's been useful, helpful, if you're enjoying this, share it with a friend, man. We love getting co to connect with new people. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, we're excited to have that option out there for you guys. And I know I've mentioned this in the past, but I do want to remind you, we have forgotten Jesus groups that are available now. So there are there are group material. There's yes. group material questions you can ask to go along with every single episode. You can find that in the show notes. Uh, Pastor, thank you again. Candy, thank you. Um, I'll set you guys up a counseling meeting later yeah, to we'll we'll work through it. some of the disagreements we have. We may have a new che change of seating. Yes, I may week. have to sit in the middle. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> this was fun. And we will see you guys on the next episode.